What's up, people? As usual, I'm online and I'm not in tune. Hooray, so I'm in tune. So uh, it's Friday night and I've been working. Hey, what's up, Marco? Deadpool, what's up? So I just thought I'd give you a quick rundown on movable chords because a lot of you out there, you know, you get in touch and you say like we're super beginners and we find chords like super hard. What's up, Toby? And actually, it's not that hard to get your hands around them if you're just learning one chord at a time, okay? So let's start off with probably my favorite chord. What's, what's going down, Justin? How's it going, man? Um, so whenever you pick up your guitar, guys, the first thing to do, the very first thing to do is play E. And to play E like that is much nicer than just going, am I in tune? Because it kind of sounds, just kind of sounds a bit rotten when you're not playing a chord, right? So if you put down that E chord, the E major, that's actually just, you know, you're hearing the bottom E ringing, the top E ringing, and everything sounds in harmony. Well, hopefully, if you're in tune, okay? So if you're gonna learn a chord, learn that one chord first, and the beauty about learning this E chord, okay, if you don't know how to do it, I'll show you very quickly. First finger, first fret on the third string, okay, the G string. Second finger, second fret on the fifth string, the A string. And third finger, second fret underneath that uh, a string on the D string, okay? And you play all the strings. Okay, and the beauty about playing that E is you can change it into an E minor by just taking away your first finger. Okay, you can put it back. And there you go. But anyway, this is about movable chords, so. one chord and you can move it around up and down the fretboard it doesn't really matter what you do with it it's it's about just messing around and seeing what you can come up with right And to get it moving up and down the fretboard, what I'm doing, I'm not actually holding the frets down constantly. I'm just keeping the position. Then when I want to move it, I'm taking the pressure off my fingers and I'm just slowly sliding them across the strings, putting the pressure back down where, where, wherever I want them. In this case, in the third fret. And there you have it, right? Take the pressure off again. That doesn't sound so nice, but move it to the next one. And there you go, and that's pretty cool. Just improvise, you know? Just that's moving E. Let's um, let's have a look on here and who's been who's been coming up. Mohammed, what's up, dude? Uh, okay, so let's have a scroll through. So, Mohammed, you say I want to be like you. You are awesome. <laughs> Much respect, bro. You don't want to be like me. Trust me. Be yourself, man. One of the best teachers ever. Well, thank you very much. I really appreciate that, dude. So, guys, if you've got any questions, now's the time to fire them at me, okay? Okay, Ren, you're saying, uh, the man, very cool tutorials. One of my favorite teachers. Well, thank you very much, man. I really appreciate that, okay? Oh, we've got Fraser online as well. How's it going, Fraser? He's saying great tips tonight. No problem at all, man. Uh, actually, you kind of inspired me to 
to do a little lesson on this, so I thought, you know, why not come online? I've got five minutes, let's have a go. So Patrick, hey, what's up, Patrick? Let's have a look. So let's get back into these chords. You can learn another chord as well, right, guys? It's a really easy chord, it's D, okay? If you don't already know it, check it out. First finger, second fret on the third string, okay? Second finger, also in the second fret, but now on the first string, and then my third finger, second string in the third fret, okay? And you don't really want to hit the bottom E for this. You know, I get a lot of people like looking down, oh, where do I go from? You can go from the A, or you can go from the D, but just aim in general. Just sort of try and avoid that bottom E string, okay? And this is another one that sounds really nice when you move it. So I've gone from, now I'm looking at where my first finger is in the second fret. And then I moved it up to the fourth. Move it up to the fifth. Or seventh. We're just guessing here, you know, not playing anything in particular. this pinky in on the top E string okay so it's no song in particular I'm just improvising it's very important guys when you, especially when you're learning is to pick something super simple like, you know, a single chord and mess around with it. The beauty about this D is you can play suspended chords as well. And what I mean by that is you can take away like the second finger and then you've got that top E ringing out. Put it back on and you can just mess around with that. Put the pinky on as well. That's a really cool one. I guess, when would I use it in a song? So that's like my version of Cocaine, I guess, by Eric Clapton. Normally you'd know it. Something like that, right? But I just do it, you know, with the acoustic guitar. playing that D and sliding it all the way up. So simple, simple chords guys, all right? Check them out. Let me have a quick look now. So who's back online? Who's been shouting at me? Uh, how do uh, how do you get the picks? What, you mean these picks here? <laughs> I'll get to that in a second. Um, Deadpool, any amps you recommend? It depends what you wanna do, man. There's so many amps on the market. I mean, uh, it depends on your budget, it depends if you want a valve amp, I mean, if you're just going to be sitting and practicing in your bedroom, you don't need like something super massive, unlike what I used to buy a lot. <laughs> um, just something that's, you know, compatible, compatible for what you want to do. For example, one of my students recently bought, uh, it was like a Boss amp, I'd never actually seen one before, I didn't realise they did amps, and of course, Boss do pedals normally. And so what they've done, they've incorporated all their pedals, or well, a lot of their pedals, into this amp as part of the effects. So you can buy a pedal uh, that connects into the amp and stuff like that. So that's really cool if you wanted effects, and it's kind of a cheap way of doing it. Or, um, you know, I guess I've always used Marshalls and stuff, but I, you know, I'm very fond of Fender amps. I'm, I'm quite old fashioned when it comes to amplifiers because I use a lot of vintage stuff, purely because I love you know, the, the, the old tube sounds, the old tube tones and stuff. But there's so much on there, man. So find something that's cool, your budget. There's tons and tons of reviews on YouTube, you know. So 
uh, an amp for the acoustic guitar, what I do use a lot whenever I gig, I use this, you might be able to see it actually, it's a cool little AR amp and it's just up there on my shelf. And that's kind of like, um, it's an amplifier slash PA and it's just, uh, especially for acoustics. But I can plug my vocal into it as well and it still sounds really cool. And you get like pure tone, but they're very expensive amps. Um, because they're like made in Germany, they still do some hand soldering in them and stuff like that. But you know, you get what you pay for. So if you want something super cool, you're gonna have to save your pennies and uh, you know, we'll go out and have a look. So how do you get the pics? Yeah, we'll get to that in a second. Is this legit live? I hope so, dude. Um, what else? Uh, can I make a tutorial on Porcupine Tree? Yeah, I can certainly have a look, man. I used to be a big fan of Porcupine Tree, and in fact, now, one of my friends, uh, Craig Blundell, he plays drums for Steve Wilson. Um, so Steve Wilson, obviously the singer of Porcupine Tree, and, um, well, I say he's, a, you know, not a close friend, but a friend of a friend, but I know him, I know him pretty well, and I've helped him out because I was a, a stage technician, um, I teched for him once because he played with a band called Frost as well, so I teched with him. That's kind of how I know the guy. But he's a he's an amazing drummer, and Porcupine Tree's an amazing band as well as Steve Wilson. You know, Steve Wilson's very cool. So yeah, I'll certainly have a look about that, dude. Um, I've learned everything I want from your videos. Thank you, and I hope you get a hundred thousand subs. Well, thank you very much. Well, I hope so. That'd be really cool to, you know, just to reach a hundred thousand people would be like amazing. That's like a stadium or something. Uh, show some blues links, probably blues licks, you mean? Something like that on the acoustic guitar, dude. If you want to learn blues, man, you have to go back. You have to go back in time and, and check out all these really cool old blues guys, okay? And you know, the problem is when someone puts me on the spot like that, my mind just goes blank. I can't play anything. So I guess like, um, so something in the pentatonic like that, I could show you, right? So how about something like, um, Something like that, okay? So what I'm doing on the on the fifth fret, I'm kind of doing this, I guess it's like uh, a Johnny B. Good thing. So I'm leaving my first finger in the third fret on the top two strings, on the B and E, and I'm bending up on the third at the fifth. I will save this so you can watch this back, all right? Let me just, like, my focus keeps on going in and out and it won't lock for some reason. Sorry about that, guys. So once you've done that, one, two, three, then I'm going to the sixth fret and bending up. Okay, bending's really hard on the acoustic guitar. Then I guess you can go back three, six, three. That's pretty cool, right? So what I'm doing there, I'm doing three, then six pulling off to three on the B, then five on the G, back to three on the B, three on the G, five on the D. How's that? Okay, so mess around with that. Let's have a look, who else we got here? Play the entire song, Seven Nation Army, but it's not that interesting, bro. And you know, I've done a lesson on it. That's the one part, you know, right? Part two. So 
there you go. Hey, Bashir, what's up? Uh, okay, let's go through. Okay, how do you strum up and down faster? Well, you're probably doing it like this. I'm just guessing. A lot of people say this. Okay, so you've got this kind of these strokes going on here, downstrokes, and the problem is to do fast downstrokes, you've got strum down, you've got to come back past the strings and strum down again. So to be more efficient, as you're coming back up, you want to hit those strings again, right? Now, the other thing is you have to be really relaxed and it's kind of a, a bit of your elbow and a little bit of your wrist as well, but keeping the whole hand close to the strings. And you don't really want a hard pick either for this because a hard pick is just going to be too, a bit too brash. And it's just about relaxing and I'm doing, if I want to get really fast, a lot of it comes from my wrist, okay? I'm sat in a bit of an awkward position here as well. But the, the trick to it is just practice. And it's about control. You want every strum to sound similar. Yeah, I'm just strumming really light. Okay, start off with a really soft pick. This is kind of like a medium. It does bend a bit, okay? So give that a go. Let me know how you get on. Um, my Taylor acoustic is amazing. Well, thank you very much. Um, believe it or not, it was a gift and it was a super expensive gift and it's worth, probably worth more than my car. It was handcrafted in America and, uh, and I love it, yeah. And it's kind of my go-to instrument now. I only really use two guitars now, if I'm being honest. Uh, and it's this, I've talked about this before, it's the Taylor and this is the Gibson, really. Um, hi, can you do a tutorial on Lamb of God? Yeah, maybe, I'll have a look. I get a lot of these requests that come through, and it just depends, dude, you know, how much time I've got to learn the tracks, because I don't know it, you know, if you said, like, I don't know, Pantera or something, I might know it, and therefore it's just easy for me to do, but when I have to go away and, and learn a song, it takes me a bit longer to do the video, okay? So it just really depends on how much time I have. I'd love to do, fulfill everyone's request, but um, sometimes it's difficult. Sorry, I'm just gonna move this. Maybe that'll, maybe that'll sort the problem out of the zooming in. Um, I'm a guitar player in my middle school, fantastic, that's really good, man. It's a very important thing to get into a band and play with other people as soon as you can. It makes you a better musician. I remember the old saying, if you're the best musician in the room, you're in the wrong room. You want to be in a room with people that are better than you and they'll make you better, okay, just by proxy. So, Living Strong 296, what's up? How's it going? Arrows and pellets, man, what's up? Thanks, Ed. Um, love new tutorials, XD, Seek and Destroy is an awesome, Blues Lick, lots of muddy water stuff. Seek and Destroy is a Metallica song, surely, off their first album. Um, I probably did a little clip of that on my Instagram, there's a little Instagram video perhaps. Muddy Waters, yeah, Muddy Waters, man, is the dude, you know. <laughs> All that kind of crazy stuff. Uh, let's have a look. I'm still scrolling through. Uh, who's my favorite guitarist? Tricky one. At the moment, maybe there's a guy called Dor Bramhall II, and he, his father used to play for Stevie Ray Vaughan years and years ago, you know, probably back in the 70s and 80s. Maybe the 80s, yeah. And, um, yeah, and he's, like, really cool. He's a lefty, but he's, like, a super cool guitarist. He actually plays reverse guitar. I think the guitar is just upside down. So Doyle Bramhall II, check him out. He's really cool. And at the moment, I go through phases of, of you know, following different guitarists. 
So um, I bought an Eddie Van Halen strap yesterday, I'm guessing. That's really cool, man. Love Eddie Van Halen, yeah? Maybe we can do a bit of... It's not gonna happen on the acoustic guitar. <laughs> two finger tapping, you got me two finger tapping now, live on my acoustic guitar. It's just not happening, guys. Uh, yeah, I guess you're talking about my uh, elixir strings. Do I have a particular way I hold the pick, for example, on an angle? Very good question. People ask me about this all the time because, you know, playing with a pick can be a bit alien to some of you guys, right? So kind of the rule I have is when I'm holding the pick, it's always between my first finger and my thumb, okay? And the pick kind of, if my thumb is pointing to like midnight, I don't know if you can see that, but let's have a look on the camera. Yeah, so if, if your thumb is pointing to like 12 o'clock, all right, so pointing straight up, I guess the pick comes out at what, 11 o'clock? Or what's that from your angle? Yeah, perhaps 11 o'clock or something like that. But it does move, all right? And importantly, you don't want to grip the pick too hard. The, everything's like got tension in it. And you don't want to grip it too soft, whereas, it, you know, it'll come out of your hand when you hit the strings too hard, all right? So it's kind of in between, and it took me years to find the right pick. So experiment with different picks, and I'll give you, I'll give you an example, right? So I've got one of my other picks here, which I really like the tone of these. It's kind of why I picked them. So one of my picks, and I'm going to tell you how you can get some of these in a minute. So... I'll give you an example. I don't know how well this is going to come across on YouTube, but anyway. So let's just say, I don't know, D. So that's quite a soft tone. This is like, these are my go-to picks for the acoustic guitar. They're like just, it's a one millimeter nylon USA Dunlop, okay? I've used them for years. And this is one of my own custom picks. And it's got a much lighter tone, a much sharper, intense sort of attack. Yeah, there's that one, this is the black one. So it's a very subtle difference, you know? But this one certainly feels like faster for me, but if I was gonna be playing like on the electric, soloing and stuff like that, because it's harder. Um, I get a much stronger attack with these picks, okay? So yeah, and they come in all different materials, like this is kind of a plasticky material and it's gonna give you, it's gonna give you a much sharper tone. This is a nylon material. It's a much smoother tone, okay? And you'll feel it under your fingers. The other thing as well, the pick will move as you play. As a basic rule, it's just, you know, if I'm playing like solo stuff, whatever, I've got a really small pick. You know, I've made it really small, all right? And for that, for the reason being, I can get really close to the strings. Okay, if I've got a big pick like this, you know, if I'm holding it like on the end, it's much slower, I don't get the same attack. However, if I want to do that, if I want to do really fast strumming, you want a bit more pick showing, okay? So people don't realize the pick does move around and it's just finding a position you get comfortable with it. But what I see a lot of in students holding it with two fingers like this, uh, it's not really cool. Try and get used to holding it between the first finger and the thumb and definitely not like this, okay? Where you've got your first finger tucked under like that. I don't know if you can see that, and it's kind of like, I see students doing that all the time. And you don't get any control over it because it's locked into your fist. So you want to keep it nice and relaxed. Okay, so I hope that answers your question, dude. Uh, now I've lost my place on here. I'm just scrolling through the screen. Have I heard Old Snow, White Sun? I haven't. 
Maybe I should check it out. Beautiful chords. I'm cu curious how to play them. I'll have a look, man. It could be unusual tuning. I'm not sure. Um, uh, let's have a look. You've got an Epiphone. Excellent. One of my students has just bought an Epiphone, actually. So Justin Hayes is saying he's got an Epiphone. Um, one of my students got an Epiphone, and it looks very much like the tailor. And when I picked it up, if I close my eyes, it could have been the tailor. It was very close. You get a lot of money. You get a lot of uh, guitar for your money these days. And, uh, and that's because they're all cut by computers and lasers. And so the quality is much higher now. So when you buy a cheap guitar, you're still getting a really high quality guitar. So don't worry about that. The reason why I wanted this one, and it's all about the wood and the tone. And when it's constructed by someone manually, it gives it a different tone. So it doesn't sound like every other guitar on the rack. So it took me a while to, to pick it out. It took me a few hours to pick this guitar out. But you know when you've got the guitar you want, okay? And it's something that comes in time. You attune your ear to it, and it's they're very subtle things. But um, for now, you know, if you've got like a £200 guitar or a $200 guitar or whatever, that's absolutely fine. And it's probably a hell of a lot better than what I learned on, okay? So, hey, what's up, Germany? Um, am I doing YouTube for life? I don't know, dude. I really don't know. But um, what I do put on YouTube, I'm not going to remove it, okay? So as long as YouTube's around, I guess my videos are going to be there. So enjoy them, okay? I'm sure they'll date. I'm sure there's, you know, a million and one other guitar players out there doing the same stuff as me. So, you know, it'll probably get lost in, in the in the machine somewhere. Uh, Randy Rhodes, Randy Rhodes, yeah, fantastic guitar player. Let's have a look. Um, uh, so I got a message uh, retracted here. I don't really know what that means, unless you've been putting bad language in the text. I hope not. Thanks, Steve. I really appreciate it. He's saying I'm an amazing teacher. I'm not sure about that, but hopefully if I help someone out, then that's really cool. So I appreciate it. I'm a lefty too, but I play right-handed. Well, look, you should try playing left as well, okay? I, I also have a student who's left-handed. He writes with his left hand, but he plays a normal guitar, a normal right-hand guitar. So don't get too wrapped up in that. Don't worry about that too much. It's whatever you find comfortable. And if you find in the future you want to, uh, you know, try a left-handed guitar or whatever, try it. Just go into a shop and explain to them, and they'll help you out, all right? Hey, Levy, what's up? Um, will I ever run out of music to create on my guitar? Definitely not, man. That, there's, there's, there's billions and billions of combinations. So, you know, it's just finding inspiration. That's the tricky bit, right? I never played with a pick. Would it improve my playing? Now, I play with fingers a lot. <laughs> Because you get you get all different vibes with playing with fingers, okay? Um, playing a pick will, if you're trying to do intricate speed stuff, you know, yeah, of course it's going to improve. You can't do that with your fingers. So there's some things that are going to, the pick's going to make better, and there's some things that fingers are going to be better for. But... I would always recommend having a go with the pick because it just adds something extra to your playing. You know, look at people like Jeff Beck. They play with a pick and they play with fingers as well. So it's kind of, they call it hybrid picking, yeah? So just try it out, experiment. There's, remember, there's no rules, guys. Just have fun with it. What do I think about country music? Country boy here, no yelling at me. <laughs> Just asking. Uh, I love JJ Kale. Absolutely love JJ Kale. But I don't know if you can class him as country because there's a bit of country in him, there's a bit of blues in him, there's a bit of folk in him. I guess like Johnny Cash, love Johnny Cash, you know? Uh, my grandfather always used to listen to Johnny Cash, so from a young age, I, you know, I was hearing all this country and western stuff, and, and I love it, and I love the storytelling behind it. Um, but I, I wouldn't say I get deep into it. One thing I will say about country guitar players, they're always good. They're always good, you know, because they're always experimenting and doing different stuff. 
Um, the pop kind of country stuff, I'm not so keen on. It's really popular these days. And I read somewhere that uh, Taylor Swift and John Mayer are like the biggest selling country artists. I wouldn't have put John Mayer into that category, but crazy. I love his blue stuff. So, Am I in a band? Yeah, well, I spoke about this before. I have been in bands for many, many years, and now I just play as a solo artist, and I have a band. I have my, my best friends in the world, and we've played together for years. So I guess so, but it's not like we're in a band called Death Machine, and we go out and gig all the time. It's not like that anymore because, you know, things just move on, and, and everyone does different stuff. So... When I do solo gigs, the guys come in and play with me and, and vice versa. So we just have fun with it, really. Um, when, I, uh, when I'm when i playing guitar, I keep pushing on my teeth. How do I stop doing that? You know what? I still do that as well. And it's concentration. It's concentration. You just need to relax. And what you find is... After a while, when you do relax, when you're, when, you know, if you're trying to work out some crazy lick, whatever you're trying to do, um, you'll start to relax and you'll stop doing that, okay? But half the problem solved, you know what you're doing, so it's just being conscious of being more relaxed when you play. Playing the guitar is supposed to be a, a relaxed thing anyway, unless you're playing like Slayer or something, then it's, you know, gets a bit more intense. Um... I can't wait for the notes to get in my head so I can jump in with anybody playing guitar. Yeah, well, that's the thing. The more people you play with, the better. And, you know, find someone that's roughly on your level. Maybe a bit better would be good. Maybe they're not, not as good as you, but hook up with them. And what you'll find is well, by swapping the parts, I guess, um, you know, you could learn a shuffle, you know. So someone's doing the shuffle, holding down the groove. Someone else can be, you know, soloing over the top or whatever, all right? So that's that's a cool thing to do. And it's just play, 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 play. And the notes will go into your head. The positions will become familiar. And it's just about putting the hours behind the fingers, okay? Uh, who was my inspiration when you were learning in the early days? Ah, oh, so much. It, I, you know, it jumped from week to week. I started off, I've talked about this before, with people like Eric Clapton. And then I was in school with a guy called Matthew Reese, And he used to give me, like, mixtapes. And these mixtapes, yeah, back in the days when he, we had audio tapes. Um, and it had, like, stuff on, like, Eddie Van Halen, because he was a guitarist as well, and my friend Matthew. And... Um, Motley Crue, or Guns N' Roses, I used to love Guns N' Roses, like Slash, uh, but all sorts, all sorts of stuff, you know, and, and you must keep an open mind when it comes to music, because restricting yourself to say, I'm only going to listen to metal, or I'm only going to listen to blues, well, you're missing out on a lot there, because even like bands like Meshuggah, you know, they listen to, dare I say, jazz, and stuff like that, but when you start looking at the intricacies of jazz, you, you know, a lot of metal players get a lot of stuff out of it, okay? So, yeah, just all sorts in the early days. Um, now, I'm probably getting a bit behind. Now, guys, I'm uh, it's getting to, like, 35 minutes, so I'm going to come offline soon, so I'll, I'll talk about the picks. Um, could you do a tutorial for a second heartbeat of Avenged Sevenfold? I'll have a look. I'll stick it on the list, okay? I've got a million and one requests, and every morning when I wake up, it's just, can you do, can you do, can you do, can you do? And it's kind of, you know that scene in Bruce Almighty when he's like, ah, uh, you know, yes to all. It kind of feels like that sometimes. So I'll do my very best. Um, I have a certain way that I pick songs. Um, so, uh, you know, I'll get around to it. I'm sure I've got some Avenged Sevenfold in there, okay? Um... Hi, is there a way, sorry, it keeps on flicking. Hi, is there a way to gauge how far the string should be away from the frets to make it easier to play? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So we call it the action. So when you look across the guitar like this, you can see how close my strings are to the fretboard. If you've got a gap like that, <laughs> you've got problems because it's going to be really difficult. And my first guitar, I'm just looking up there because that's where it is. And my first guitar, 
used to have a ridiculous action and down here it was just ah it was rotten to play okay and yeah so if it's really high then you need to get it looked at all right and don't go messing with it yourself if you don't know what you're doing because there's a truss rod that runs inside the wood of your neck and there's all sorts of adjustments that can be done on the bridge depends on whether it's an electric or an acoustic but i guess a little trick that i learned many moons ago would be to get a stack of picks um, and let me see it's probably about three or four picks stacked together let me just have a look so i'm stacking them together yeah and it's about four picks on the 12th fret so what, all i'm doing there i'm stacking where's the lens yeah you can't really see that but i'm stacking four picks together all right and you know whether whether that's five ten mil or whatever and all i'm doing i'm putting it between it's very hard to do this i'm putting it between the strings and look you know and it just stays there okay it doesn't it just touches the strings up okay so that's you know if they're slipping through probably need to get it adjusted all right so that's kind of roughly but it does depend a lot on the instrument okay can I do a tutorial of the Pokemon theme song? <laughs> Dude, really? I'll put it on the list, okay? So I've got these picks to give away. I've already sent away about 100 of them, and it's very expensive to send these around the world, okay? So um, if you want one of these picks, I need you to send me a video of you playing your guitar. Now, you don't have to put it out on YouTube you can just put it like private so you know and you can just share the link with me and I want to see you playing one of my songs that I've done in a tutorial okay because I want to see how you guys are getting on and every single person that sends me this video with them playing one of the songs that I've done on YouTube I will send you some pics okay regardless where you live whether it's Egypt or Antarctica or wherever okay I'll send you some pics so I'm just coming up to 40 minutes now guys so if you've got any more questions now's the time to now's the time to ask could I do some red hot chili pepper songs I was doing one the other day with um, one of my students could I lie see if I remember it took me right back to when I was in school that song and it's from the album Blood Sugar Sex Magic so if in my personal opinion that's their best album but you know that came out when I was like 14 years old or whatever so some Gary Moore all right how's that bit of Parisian walkways do I know how to play any other instruments uh, I want to learn another instrument yeah, I play the bass, and I mess around. I mess around with keyboards for years, but the guitar's my thing, really. I wouldn't call myself a bass player either. And if my bass player's watching now, I say my bass player. The bass player I play with in the band, if he's watching now, he'd be like, "No, nah, he can't play the bass." Because I play the bass like a guitar with a pick. Uh, whatever. All right. So, um. Let's have a look. Arrows and pellets, I'm dead. <laughs> Why, dude? Um, how do you set the video? Well, all you have to do, right, you can record a video on your phone, okay? So if you've got a YouTube account, which I'm guessing you have because you're watching me, so you can just click, um, like, record. It'll record it for you. I'm just show, it's just showing me now my battery's low, guys, so I'm going to go very shortly. So what do you do? You, you click on to record, and like, like you're going to do a live recording, but you can just put it to private, okay? You can set it to private, and then all you do is just personal message me the link so I can see it, just me and you, not the world. I'm not going to share it with anyone. I can't, you know? So I'm not going to do that. And, um, you know, um, send me your details. You have to get your parents' consent, all right? Because they don't know who I am. I could be some complete nutball, all right? So, but we'll talk about that when you send me the video, okay? So... 
I look forward to seeing all your vids. And uh, last question: How do I play sound on my mind on guitar? I don't know, dude. Uh, is that a Smashing Pumpkins song? I don't know. Um, glad to see you live. Maybe more coming soon. Yeah, I'm gonna try and do these. Maybe not once a week, but I'll try and do them more often. Uh, you're about ten days in on the guitar, bro. We'll keep going. Keep going. Uh, Fear of the Dark, yeah, we'll do some Maiden, we'll do some Maiden. I'm thinking of getting another guitar, I currently have an Ibanez, semi-acoustic, I want a full electric around 300, what would I buy? Well, Ibanez are pretty cool, semi-acoustic, um, there's really, there's some really good Martins out there, um, I mean, there's so many guitars, it depends, man, I mean, go and try as many out as possible, that's what I did, I didn't really... I didn't go, right, I'm, you know, I used to like guilds and stuff like that because of Alice in Chains. I was a huge Alice in Chains fan, still am. And they used to play guilds, and I went and tried a low down and really couldn't get on with them. So it's just a matter of finding, you know, what, what works for you, okay? So anyway, guys, my battery is about to die. Thank you so much for all your questions. Thank you so much for your support. I can't tell you how much I appreciate it, all right? And... Um, I'll try and do this more often, and like I said, send me those videos, whether it's to my personal YouTube account, or to my Instagram, or my Facebook, okay? However you want to send it, it just stays with me. I will not share it with the world, okay? And you've got my word for that, all right? And I'll send you some pics, no matter where you live, okay? So thank you very much, guys. I'll see you again in the week, all right? Keep an eye out for some new tutorials.